Uh, Secretary of uh, Treasury Tim Geithner uh, doesn't seem to know what uh, he believes in. Uh, can't make up his mind whether or not he supports a global currency to replace the U.S. dollar or leave the U.S. dollar. Next guest adamantly opposes a global currency and proposing legislation now that would prohibit the United States from recognizing any other currency besides the greenback. Republican from Minnesota, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. Hello, Congresswoman. How are you? Hi, Glenn. I'm doing great. Thank you for the opportunity. Sure. Now, uh, how's the legislation coming? Is Nancy Pelosi even going to put it up there? Or? Well, we don't have a hearing scheduled yet, but we mm -hmm. didn't have trouble getting co-signers. We've got at least 30 members of Congress on board, and I anticipate we'll have more. Okay, I hang on just a second. I can't believe that you've only got 30 co-sponsors. Uh, I mean, how is, how is it you can walk around and go, just, I just, this is just, hey, save the dollar, and only 30 people are willing to say, man, yeah, that sounds like a good thing. Let's give that a shot. Well, maybe with, maybe with your show today, we'll get a few more members of Congress that will get phone calls from the folks back home encouraging them to sign on. Okay, here's, here's the one thing that um, uh, comes to mind, Michelle, and that is we can, we can pass anything that says we're not going to recognize any currency, but that won't keep the value of the currency. The only thing that will keep the currency uh, uh, valued, the only reason why we would look to another currency is because ours sucks because we've devalued it by spending and borrowing right. and printing. So That's right. this, this legislation really in the end means nothing if we don't stop the spending. The spending is key to everything, but it seems like right now there are so many leaks in the dam from every different area. We're fighting out of control spending on one hand, out of control taxation on another, and now we're talking about the International Monetary Fund being expanded to take on a new, entirely different set of responsibilities it was never designed to take on, and that would be expanding the special drawing down rights for every country and taking the dollar off as the medium of exchange. That in itself would devalue our dollar lower than we have ever seen before in the history of our country. I don't want to see that happen. Okay. Uh, tomorrow is um, uh, the G20. Is it tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. Tomorrow it's is coming the G up in London. Yes. Okay. Um, and that's you know group of the 20 big con uh, the countries, and they all get together and say, "Hey, look at us. We're important. Let's make decisions here." And then nobody really listens to it. But this is this is critical because what they're going to do at the G20 is they're going to talk about new financial global institutions. Yeah. They're going to talk about new framework. How scary is this? Well, there's no authority that's been given from the United States Congress to the president to create transnational global financial authorities. And that's one concern that I had with my legislation. Because we heard from Russia, China, South uh, America, or South Africa, Brazil, India. We've heard from a number of France, different countries calling, Germany. France calling for this new expansion of the, of the International Monetary Fund, removing the dollar as the standard of exchange. If that happens, again, the United States will lose its position as the premier financial authority. Okay. And we need to recognize just how critical this is. That's what I think people are missing, because everything is too big. I want to yeah. try to see if we can break it down. When we come back in a second, we'll break it down. America, th this is what this will mean to you if the dollar goes away. Next. Would you categorically renounce the United States moving away from the dollar and going to a global currency as suggested this morning by China and also by Russia, Mr. Secretary? I would, yes. You would categorically, and in the Federal Reserve Chair? I would also. We're actually quite open to that suggestion, uh, but you should think of it as rather evolutionary building on the current architecture than rather than, um, rather than moving us to global monetary union. I mean, this is amazing. That, that was... Uh, Congressman uh, uh, Michelle Bachman from Minnesota is with us. Congresswoman, the, the, it was one day spread in between. You asked him first, the next was, day he it said was that. Less than, it was less than 24 hours that we saw the complete contradiction. So the question is, which Treasury Secretary do we believe? The one in front of the committee or the no. one in front of the Council on Foreign Relations? Council of Foreign Relations. You should, uh, did you think right. about saying to him, hey, Treasury Secretary, let's play hardball. No. Well, uh, we, we noted, noticed they weren't asked to raise their right arm and declare a solemn oath the yeah, way that, oh, no, uh, you know what, what I, happened I think, with the AIG official. Yeah, I, I think, Congresswoman, the, these, the, these, uh, the, the Fed and the Treasury, what we're all being told right now is just a pack of lies. Um, they know, 
maybe, what do I know? I'm a self-educated man. But just my spider senses tell me we can no longer pay for the debt that we're currently uh, incurring. All the things, all the programs, all the stimulus, all of it, everything, we're on the hook now. Not Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, and all that stuff. But what they've done to us in the last six months, and what Bush and everybody else did to us over the last 10, 15 years, we are now at $19 trillion. How do we pay for that except print our own money and de devalue our dollar? And that's the problem. You've hit it on the, on the head because when you have that level of debt, there's only three ways you can solve it. You can tax people $19 trillion, which simply can't be done because it's not available. You can borrow the money, but again, you have to be able to pay that money back. Or three, you print worthless paper yeah. to pay for that. And clearly it appears that's what the route the Obama administration and will go. Isn't it, in the, isn't it interesting to you? I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've been told we have a minute. I want to get this in. Isn't it interesting that he said to you, no, I have no intention. But then when he was in front of the Council of Foreign Relations, yeah, you know, and you got to think about it, this complex framework and everything else. And he goes into something that he's obviously thought about. This wasn't off the top of his head. And yet in the State Department, on a story we just did a few minutes ago, Harold Coe, is going to be our chief attorney for international relations and this guy is an internationalist that wants to talk forget the constitution gang he wants to tie us all together you find those connected at all congresswoman well, uh, Mr. Cole has a very strong agenda. He wants to move the United States away from being under a constitutional form of government where the people elect representatives, and we truly use that as our framework, to essentially rejecting that and moving to an inter unknown international authority that's accountable to no one. And it's very frightening when you couple that with the comments that were made by the Treasury Secretary. That's why it's imperative that we keep the United States in control of setting the valuation of our own currency. We we don't want to cede that authority to the International Monetary Fund. we got to stop spending money. Congresswoman, yes. thank you so yes. much.